Hello and welcome to episode 28 of my Working with Todoist series. Oh, I had a mental block then. Uh, today I want to talk about labels in this episode and I know that labels or in Getting Things Done, the original book, which I have right here. This is my own personal copy which I bought, whoa, maybe 12 years ago now and I still have it. It is still with me and although I actually have a digital copy of this now, I actually have the 2015 edition digital copy, I still somehow prize this book. It is, it is the one, one of the books uh, that has changed my life and this book by David Allen um, really revolutionized the way I organize my day, organize my tasks and organize my work. But today I want to talk about labels and how we use labels in Todoist and I know this is a very very personal subject because everybody works differently. So I just want to get into this and uh, go through basically how I use labels and hopefully we'll give you guys some tips on how you can use labels too. So uh, without further ado, let's go into the computer and fire up Todoist. Right, so before I go into my version of Todoist and show you my labels, I just want to go through a little bit of history of to of labels and where they came from. In particular, I, I really do need to point out that in the Get, David Allen's Getting Things Done book, labels are what are actually called context. Context means, well, let me just show you. Uh, a context, what is a context? Well, it's defined in Wikipedia as a context is list is a list that can be defined by the set of tools available or by the presence of individuals or groups for whom one has items to discuss or present. Now, basically, what this means is that in order for you to do a task, you're either going to need a tool, whether that be your phone, your computer, or just a place, like being at home or in the office, or you're going to need to be with a person. If that particular tool or person is not available, then you cannot do that task. And in a later episode, I'm going to go through a little bit more on on uh, the GTD system and how to use a GTD system in uh, Todoist. But context in Todoist is really, really key part of the whole GTD process. Now, the original 2001, when the book first book was published, uh, context, when I looked at it this morning, I thought, wow, this is really rather uh, cute in a way, because Obviously, way back in 2001, things were far more simpler than they are today. So we had calls, so these were the telephone calls you had to make when you were at your computer uh, errands. That's like doing your shopping and taking the dog for a walk, taking the garbage out. Things that you had to do or could only do at the office, things that you could only do at home. Agendas means uh, people that you need to talk about something with, and of course, read and review. These were the original GTD concept, uh, context that David Allen mentioned. Um, as I say, when I looked at them, they, I thought, wow, life really was so much simpler uh, 15 years ago. Now, things have moved on since then, and uh, well, actually, go back to 2001. This is what your computers look like. Now, my fortunately, my desk did not look like this, but I did know many people who had desks that did look a lot like this. And uh, I don't know if you know this week, but Tim Cook was interviewed by ABC News in America, and he actually did the interview in his desk. This is the first time, I believe, that we've ever seen uh, Tim Cook's desk. And this is done, obviously, last week or maybe a week before. And if you look closely... Today's computers and technology means that we obviously have a lot less paper flying around. Clearly, Tim Cook seems to like writing notes, and, and to be honest, so do I. I, I still use a notebook, a paper-based notebook. But when you look at the, the office today, and this is the CEO of Apple's office, um, much simpler than it was way back in 2001. Although interesting to see that he has inboxes and outboxes there, um, but everything now seems to focus a lot more 
on the desktop computer or if you look in the background you can see he has a, a MacBook Pro I guess uh, sat there in the background although we do know that Tim Cook tends to do a lot of his email on his iPad so um, but anyway when you think about our labels and our context today we we now have technology that can capture that, that is with us pretty much 24 hours a day. Most people have a laptop or a desktop, a tablet, com uh, a tablet or an iPad, and we have a mobile phone. Now, this to me is very interesting because um, it means that, technically speaking, the whole thing has become a lot more simpler, but at the same time has become a lot more complex. So to pe today, when you're looking at your labels and how you're going to set up your labels, you really do need to think about what tools do you have, uh, what tools do you use. Um, the key to me is, is keeping my labels very, very simple. So let me show you how I do this in Todoist. Here I am in my Todoist and in my labels section, as you can see here. Um, I have um, a few, as you can see, quite a few labels down here. I have computer, and this is mainly uh, all the tasks that I use that I, can, that I do on my computer. And this one is my biggest one because I'm always carrying either my laptop with me or I'm working from my desktop. Quarrel is the name of my laptop. I, I always give my computers a name. Quarrel is specifically my laptop, and I have one task, which is actually a recurring task, which is to update or to make sure Quarrel's Dropbox folder is updated uh, every Friday evening. Of course, I have my iPhone, and these are all the things that I do from my iPhone. I've got my iPad. Uh, one of the things that I can do on my iPad is do writing, particularly if I take its keyboard with me. And sometimes if I don't want to carry my laptop, I'll take that, which is why uh, write, uh, writing part, continue writing business creativity book has both computer and iPad because I can do both. Uh, any device, uh, this can be done on anything because I just need internet or um, if I'm studying Korean, which is actually on hold at the moment, would be learn 10 new words. Email. Can again can be done pretty much from any device so I've actually kept this uh, pretty ubiquitous now home uh, my wife is my uh, agenda if you like um, so we have things like that anywhere these things can be done anywhere my tickler I, I to be honest I'm debating whether to have this as a label because I have a project named Tickler, but it's there anyway. I have my thinking time because some things that need to think about and review. Uh, I review my exercise goals every three months and research, which there's nothing in there at the moment, and teaching, which is, again, there's nothing in there. Now, one of the things that I would tell you to do is I recommend that at least on a monthly basis that you go through your labels and just edit them down. Keep them as simple as possible. Now... How you used context, this is the key thing. Uh, most of us, and I, I confess, me too, are using these on as a... Um, probably not using these properly. But if you don't use dates in your task, so if you're not going to allocate a date into your task, then using context is another good way of, of actually using them. So, for example, if I'm working at uh, my... If I'm working in a coffee shop, I'm likely to have my computer with me. I'm also likely to have my iPhone with me. And I'm also likely to have possibly have my iPad with me as well. Or I could have any of my devices with me. So um, I can just run through these lists and see what I've got with me. And this is how you would use um, your uh, labels. Now, as I say, if you're not going to use dates... Um, then labels is the next best thing to use because obviously you can get on with tasks that are uh, specific to the tools that you have with you. And if you've got the premium version, then of course you can set up filters and you can use, I mean, I don't have that many filters, but I could easily set up a filter to include my computer, Quarrel, iPhone and iPad and maybe just call that coffee shop. So there you go. This is how I use um, my uh, labels in Todoist. Uh, I'm not a big user of them, but uh, from time to time, if I've, particularly if I'm finished and I've got 20 minutes and I can have a quick look at my phone, uh, for example, context and see if there's anything that needs doing, or I can just look at uh, research if I have any research to be doing at the moment or any reviews.
So there you go. That's how I use uh, labels. I know labels are very, very um, personal. Uh, it really does depend on your situation and your circumstance and what you are comfortable with. I know there are some people who like to use energy levels, for example, and I think that's a really good idea. Um, but I've, I've kind of progressed from the original GTD usage of, of labels or context and I've created my own bunch, which I am now very comfortable with. So if you've got any unique ways of using labels, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section below and uh, share them with other people because I know that context can always help people uh, when they're using uh, the GTD system and they can be really, really useful in Todoist. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Well, that's all I have for today on labels and how I'm using labels. Uh, before I finish, I just want to thank all of you guys, and I mean every single one of you who viewed my uh, videos and have found what I've been doing useful. Uh, I also want to thank all of you who have subscribed. But I, most of all, I just want to say that I am really blown away. Um, 5,000 views in two months was m way over what I was expecting. Uh, this just started off because I wanted to share how I use Todoist and uh, the comments people are leaving and all the help I'm getting from other people and ideas. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you. Thank you guys. It's why I do it. I want to help you and of course if you have any uh, questions about Todoist I will always do my best to help you out. So once again Thank you so much for viewing these videos. I am completely blown away and hopefully I'll be able to keep producing these videos and get them out there so that I can help you, you all in the future. Thank you very, very much.